Sarah Bell, straighten your hat. What a mess. But Sarah, must we go so fast? Heather speeding for them. I told you, we have to get to Virginia City before the auction. Heather, dear, we'll be there soon. Lorraine, put your dress down. Your limbs are showing. Don't do this at the new stage. Must be some kind of emergency. Toothers don't normally go that fast. Get up! Get up! Yeah! soon, and I do not want the Lowell girls to look like a bunch of dance hall tramps. <laughs> You, you ladies all right in there? Wheel. Well, I've never heard of such a thing. How long is it going to take to fix this carelessness? Don't you worry, Nana. I'll get it fixed just as soon as I can. You don't seem to understand. I must be in Virginia City before noon. I told you that. Well, I was driving too fast in the first place to get you there ahead of schedule when this dang wheel busted. Sarah, we must be thankful. The Lord was merciful. You all right, ma'am? I must get to Virginia City by noon. How much will you charge to convey Well, we're going that way, ma'am. I'm Ben Carter. How much? much? Oh, well, there won't be any charge, ma'am. We're going that way. I'm upon paying. I'll make it a fair price. And may, meanwhile, it's my sister's and the luggage. Young man, you all right, get ladies? up there and get that luggage down. Driver, yes, untie please. Sure, you all right now? Yes. All right. Here we are. Please okay. hurry. Okay, so. <laughs> we'll, we'll all be right, fine now. Here. there you are, ma'am. All right. Now, come on over here. Here, give me a hand with that. Hey, you watch it, Ben. All right. Watch a big one here, Hawk. Oh, he's heavy now. Everything all right? Young man, will you stop fidgeting and get aboard? Oh. You're making me lose time. Ma'am, I think I'll uh, just ride on in with Deuces, Paul, after we get that wheel fixed. Yeah. Well, as you wish, make up your mind. Drive on, but drive carefully. We don't have time to be picking up baggage all the way. Yes, ma'am. See you later, Hawk. Hey, up there. I don't know how long them gals are going to be around Virginia City, but I'll tell you one thing. As long as that female Sergeant Major are around, things ain't going to be the same. office right over there, ma'am. Oh, apparently we're in time. I'll take your sisters back to the hotel. Thank you, sir. Gabrielle, you register for us. And keep in mind that we do not need the most expensive suite. 
Lorraine, you look after Heather. I shan't be long. And please, remember who you are and act accordingly. Are you in charge here? Well, that all depends, ma'am. What of? I'm referring to the auction. No, ma'am. That'll be our Mr. Billings there, the red-headed fella. Thank you. Yes. My dear sir, I understand you're in charge here. In charge of what, ma'am? Of the auction. What else? Oh, nothing else, ma'am. Only the auction. I'm Miss Sarah Lowell of Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here to inquire if property belonging to me and my sisters is to be auctioned off here today. Of course it is. Delinquent taxes. Now, wasn't that that property your uncle left you a short while ago? Well, the law requires... I wrote you as soon as I received the sales notice. And I told you that my sisters and I would be out here to operate the property. I ask you to please not sell it until we arrived. You didn't acknowledge that letter. Why? Didn't ever get no such letter. You didn't get it. I wrote it two days after the sale notice appeared. That was almost a month ago. We're here now. I suggest you strike the property from the sales list. You mean you got the money to pay all them back taxes and charges? In my letter, I ask for a, a certain amount of time. Well, the law plainly says that all those taxes have got to be paid before auction time today. Now, if you ain't got all the money, that Lancaster place goes on the block. But I've come all the way from Boston, Massachusetts, just to prevent that from happening. I have $1,000. I'll pay you the rest as soon as our home in Boston is sold. Miss Lowell, I gotta get the auction going. You can't sell it right out from under us like that. It's all we have. It's our property. We don't even have enough money to return east on. I don't have nothing to do with that lady. My hands are tied. Please, listen to me a moment. Excuse me, Miss, Miss Lowell, but the, the sister at the hotel asked me to come by and tell you that Miss Heather... Well, she was. Miss Heather? What happened? Well, they sent for the doctor, so she... The fainted. doctor? Well, she painted. Probably from exhaustion, you know, but she was fine. Please, but... you must wait. You must wait. My sister is ill. I I'll be back. What's this about uh, taxes? How come you, uh, you can't let them wait a bit? Gone too long already, Mr. Cartwright. They either got to pay all the taxes or that place goes on the block. Well, wait a minute, Billy. Hold on now. Get a thousand dollars. How much do they owe? About twenty-eight hundred. Twenty-eight hundred dollars? Well, that's ridiculous. Never heard a land around here be more than two, three hundred dollars a year in taxes. That's ten times that much. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright, I gotta get to the sale started. Will you please keep still now? All I want to know is how come they owe that much. Oh, Mr. Lancastle got behind before he died. What, ten years behind? Now come on. Now you gotta give him a chance. Should have been started by now. It's five after. Watch your blood pressure, Nate. We've got a lot riding on this, you know. What's the matter? What's holding things up out there? They're here. Who's here? Them, them Lowell sisters, all the way from Boston. How could they be here? The stage never came in. I don't know how. All I know is that one of them came in and tried to stop me from selling the place not more than ten minutes ago. They bring the money? Not all of it. And start the sale and get it over with. But what if... What if what? We gotta have that property. We got 500 head of cattle on the way in right now. It ain't only those women anymore. Ben Cartwright's got his nose in on it now, too. Cartwright? What's he got to do with the Lancaster place? Never mind. Those cattle will be here in a week, and we've got to keep that box canyon available. You get out there and get that sale started just like nothing that happens, you hear? And remember, you've got the law on your side. But if anybody looks at them records too, too close... There ain't anybody gonna look at those records. Now get out and do what you told. I'll do it. 
One slip, little man. Just one slip. Billings. Remember, five thousand's the limit on that place. You see, we get it. You. You get it. I left old Toothless over at the blacksmith shop. Them high flute leaders have a nice ride in the carriage. Boss, what do you know about the Lancaster place? Huh? It's important. What do you know about the Lancaster place? Well, it's about four sections in all. There's two of them that are good bottom land. There's a couple of sections. The rest of it's all good top grazing. A little river runs through it. Some pretty rough canyons. Why? How about buildings? Reckon as good as you want. There's a good main house, and then... What's all this about in here? All right, folks. The auction's ready to begin. First piece of property up for sale is the old Lancaster place. Now, you've got the description, about 2,500 acres. Back taxes and costs come to $2,781.76. Now, do I hear a bid? $2,900. $2,900. I got a bid of $2,900. I'm to make it a half. $3,250. For the land castle, please. It's worth five times that. Thirty-two fifties bed. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. I got a bid of forty thousand. I. Uh, Twenty-two hundred. You ask money. Forty-two hundred is bed. We must fall back on our faith, Sarah. Surely something will happen. I got a bid of forty-two hundred. Forty-two hundred dollars. Who wants to raise forty-two hundred dollars? Forty-five. Forty-five hundred dollars. Guess that closes the bidding. Forty-seven fifty. <laughs> Forty-seven fifties, the bed. Care to raise it, Mr. Catlin? Five thousand. Five thousand dollars. No other beds. I declare the property goes to... Billings. Will you close out the bidding? A couple of questions I'd like to ask. Mr. Cartwright, we, we've got an auction to finish here. Now, this uh, property that you have for sale on the block, uh, if the owners pay the back taxes before it's sold, they, uh, they get to keep it, don't they? Why, sure, but the owners are here and they can't pay. Now, as I was saying, I declare this property goes Police. to... In the name of the owners, I'll pay the taxes. Hold it, Lou. We got the winning bid. He's got no right to do that. Not now, you fool. Quiet! Quiet down! Quiet now! Now, it seems to me... Here's a check. I can't take this, Mr. Cartwright. You ain't a Lowell. Well, I'm acting for the Lowells. Well, uh, I don't know. I... Uh, the law... Now, look, Mr. Billings, you know very well that I helped draft the tax laws for this territory. If you want to debate them with me, I'm ready to hear what you have to say. I... Uh, no, sir, I... Well, that's fine. We'll just take this deed and mark it. Paid in four. Will you please tell me why you're doing this? What do you hope to gain? I don't expect to gain anything, Sloan. Bless you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, the Lord will surely bless Gabrielle, you. Gabrielle, please. This is not a Sunday school meeting. I apologize for not recognizing your prominence when we first met. You're obviously quite a power in this town. But I can't help standing here wondering just why you're taking this action. Oh, slowly, Lancaster Place is one of the finest properties around here. And I just say I couldn't stand by and see it go at ten cents on the dollar. You could have bid on it yourself. I don't need it, Miss Lowell. You do. He was trying to help, Sarah. Why were you so cold to him? Oh, 
join you fellas in South Bastard a little later on. I'm going to town to see the Lowell's. All right. Hey, how come you loan them all that money, anyway? Well, a couple of reasons, I guess. One well, the low gal's kind of sickly. But more importantly, now, Uncle Reed Lancaster sure helped me out a lot when I was starting this place. Oh, the Lowell's don't know much about ranching. All the more reason to help them. I just don't think women can run around, especially Boston women. Son, you haven't met Sarah Lowell yet. That woman could run anything she set her mind to. Speak of the devil. What is that? Uh... Yeah, that's him. Up, sing. Make yourself a pitcher of cool lemonade and bring out some cookies, will you? Yes, sir, Mr. Conrad, right away. <laughs> Well, Miss Lowell, how are you? Welcome to the Ponderosa, Miss Lowell. Well, how nice to see you. Oh, you, you've uh, met my son, Hoss. Ladies. And my other son, Joseph. This Howdy is not me. a social call, Mr. Cartwright. I have uh, drawn a promissory note in your favor, and I've secured it with a trust deed. Now, I believe you'll find everything in order. I trust you'll find the terms satisfactory. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Miss Lowell, uh, I've just had some cool lemonade prepared, wouldn't you... It's a nice... It, Joseph, will you get the lemonade, please? Yeah, sure. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a long, hot ride Isn't back into town. is that a nice invitation, sir? I'd love a cool glass of lemonade. Oh, it would be nice and refreshing. We are no longer living in town, Mr. Cartwright. We moved to our new home this morning, and we uh, must get back. Uh, I, I didn't realize you'd already moved up to the ranch. I thought Miss Heather was so ill. Our sister is much improved, thank you. Lorraine, we have a full day's work ahead of us. But, Sarah, Mr. Cartwright has already sent for the lemonade. Mammy will be here in just a jiffy. Lorraine, please get right up here. I'm sure the gentleman will excuse us. Uh, Miss Lowell, is there something we can do to no, help you? No, thank you. We're quite capable of managing for ourselves. Thank you. Well, Miss Lowell, it seems to Lorraine? me that... Lorraine? Well, it's not necessary to... One day lemonade. We got all this lemonade. Who gonna drink it? Or the chicken? Uh, give it to the cat. Chicken's had enough. Shan Hai, a gong, Tim. Get your chokung. Tim Gong, Joe, Tim Hat. Size at each house. Size at each house. Okay. enough now. You better put that down and rest a while. Well, Sarah, I'm just trying to help. Well, you'll do that nicely, dear, by regaining your health. Well, but, but I really feel good. I mean, I haven't felt this well in years. Well, don't be a martyr about it, dear. Lie back and rest a while. Lorraine, would you finish beating that rug? I'm going to get dinner on. I just dropped by to see how your ladies was getting along. Only looking out for your welfare, you understand? It is the law's job to protect you. Well, Sheriff, you can rest assured if we need any help, we'll be sure and call on you. All right. Uh, you ladies do have a gun on the premises, do you know? A gun? Well, maybe I should ask, do any of you ladies know how to handle a gun? No, Sheriff. We're from Boston. That's civilized there. Has been for a good long while. Well, you're a good long ways from Boston right now, ma'am. And it might be a good idea if you get yourselves a gun, just in case. The Ten Commandments say thou shalt not kill. Yeah, but there's a lots of mountain lions around here from time to time. Well, we're not hunters, Sheriff. We're trying to establish a home here, not a menagerie. Thank you, ma'am. But if you do need any help in a hurry, you can always call on Ben Cartwright and his boys. They're around here everywhere. I mean the Cartwright Ranch surrounds us? Well, practically. Uh, your strip of land kind of cuts into Ponderosa like a small finger pointing down the north. Well, I better be getting back to town. Good day, ladies. That's why Ben Cartwright was so generous. What do you mean, Sarah? I mean, his ranch practically surrounds us. 
holds our note. If we can't pay it off, he can foreclose and get our ranch for less than $3,000. And all his talk about Western neighborliness and friendship. Lorraine! I said to beat the rug, don't destroy it. Company, Catlin. What are you two doing here? I thought you were with the herd. Smokey sent us along ahead to make sure everything's all right. It's a good thing he did, too. What do you mean by that? He means those cattle will be arriving in two more days, so you better have that box canyon ready, Catlin, and fast. I've never let you boys down yet, so don't start worrying now. If you'd have let me say something at that auction... And alert the whole town by starting a fracas with the card rights. Smokey and the others ain't gonna like this hang-up. Not after fighting sheriffs and ranchers all the way from Montana. They're counting on you two to handle them cattle, same as always. There's near 500 head just in that first bunch alone. I've handled your stolen herds for years and made money for all of us. I told you I'd hide this bunch until the trail cools. And that's exactly what I intend to do. No? Where are you gonna put them? Under your hat? Listen, we need that canyon. We need it now. I say if those Boston females are in our way, let's kill them. That's what I say, Captain. Well, I say no. I've stayed in business a long time, but not by acting like a fool. There are other ways of getting rid of those women. Like what? Like using our brains. It seems to me that it shouldn't be too difficult to take care of four little lambs from Boston. Boston. We'll give them an old-fashioned Boston tea party. Yeah. We'll scare them half to death. Run them right out of the country and nobody will ever be the wiser. I love it out here, Lorraine. You know, I've felt so much better just since we've come here. Oh, we're all glad to see you happy again, Heather. I just wish Sarah would give me a chance. Have you seen Gabrielle anywhere? I've been looking all over for her. She's probably up in her room reading the Bible. Are you all right, dear? Oh, I'm fine, Sarah. Well, now, as soon as you're finished there, you lie down and conserve your strength. Yes, Sarah. She still treats me as if I were a three-year-old child. She doesn't mean to, Heather. It, it's just that... Well, I suppose she's so used to taking care of us, it's just become a habit with her. Heather, do this. Gabrielle, do that. And Lorraine, beat the rug. Don't destroy it. Oh, and the way she treats other people. Like the Cartwrights. I mean, they're only trying to be nice to us, Lorraine. And I felt so sorry for that poor share of coffee this afternoon. You know, did it ever occur to you that that might be Sarah's way of expressing her love? Love? By acting like a bossy old stepmother? No. By giving us the security she herself never had. By protecting us from the outside world and... Well, even to the extent of being unpopular with other people and unhappy. Unhappy? Sarah? Well, why do you think she gave up the life she loved in Boston? To sell everything and move out here to this strange environment? I just thought she felt we'd have a better chance here. Heather. She did it because of me, didn't she? Oh, Sarah loves us. In her own way, she's given herself to us always. Since we were children. I know. You know, she was little more than a child herself when father and mother died and... In that accident. But you were just a little baby and you wouldn't remember anything of that. You're not the only one indebted to her. We all are. Why, we're the only family she'll ever have. Oh, Lorraine, I'm so sorry. we better finish the dishes before Sarah gets back. You know what she'll do. <laughs> Go! 
was no accident. What do you mean? I mean that bottle had kerosene in it. That rag was stuck in it. It was lit and thrown in here. You mean this fire was... Arson. Deliberate arson. Who would do such a thing? Not even the devil could be so cruel. I think I know who did. And he may well be the devil. Roy, if that fire was set, then someone is after the lower place. I can't figure out why. Just can't seem to put my finger on it. Miss Sarah Lowell thinks she has put her finger on it. She claims that you're trying to scare them off their ranch so as you can get it for your mortgage. Oh, she does. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> and Miss Sarah Lowell, she's sure an orderly woman, isn't she? Likes everything neat and tidy under a nice big heading. The trouble is the headings are all wrong. But what's the right heading? I don't know, Roy. Sure wish I did. But I know there's an answer somewhere. I'm going to try to find it. Yeah, the horse and little Joe with the supplies. I'll see you later, Roy. Let's go over to the courthouse and check the tax records in the Lancaster place. Go back five or ten years, will you? Yeah. Joe, as soon as we get these supplies back, I'd like you to go over every inch of the lower place. Somebody wants that place so bad, I want to find out why. Good. Cattle tracks, it's branding iron, campsite not too old, and it's, it's carving. That carving's just like the one that Catlin's partner had that day at the auction. What'd you find? Well, I, I found that old Reed Lancaster was delinquent in his taxes, all right. But only in the last year before he died. Those taxes had been increased nine times more than anybody else paid for land that same size. I tell you, boy, it looked to me like those figures had been changed. I mean, it looked like they'd been smudged or something. I get it. Hey, Roy, come hey, on in, Joe. Ben? Arthur? Roy? Well, I'm glad to see you. We were coming out to have a talk with you. What brings you out here? Well, I just come out to ask Joe a question. That what? Were you riding around the Lowell sisters' place today? Yeah. 
Then I got arrested. What for? I sent him out there. Heather Lowell took pretty sick late this afternoon. The doc was there, and he said that he found their well polluted. Well, what are you saying? Do you think I polluted the well? Joe, I've known you since you were that high. I know that you couldn't possibly do anything like that. Well, then what are you talking about? Miss Sarah Lowell signed a formal complaint. And with Joe admitting that he was on their land, I have no choice. I've got to take him in. That's the law. Oh, that woman. Heather is a pretty sick girl. I understand that she's never been too strong anyhow, and the doc says that she might die. Seat, ben. I'll release him in your custody until the trial. I'll go get little Joe. You know, Paul Roy's really taking this serious, ain't he? Uh, you know Roy, letter of the law caught me. What is he doing out here, Sheriff? Why isn't he in a cell in chains? He's been bailed out, ma'am. And we don't use chains no more. But he's responsible for poisoning our well. Miss Lowell, please be reasonable. Reasonable? With a would-be murderer? Miss Lowell, I'm sure that even back in Boston, a man is entitled to his freedom under proper bond. Very well, Sheriff. I see what civil protection consists of here. I shall set my own house in order without recourse to your so-called law. Please try to understand my sister. Gabrielle and I don't think you're behind this. It, it's just that Sarah's upset over Heather. I should like to purchase four guns with suitable ammunition, please. What was that again, ma'am? Four guns with ammunition, sir. Sarah, what are you doing? My dear. Boston is behind us. This is the uncivilized West. We must arm ourselves to meet it on its own terms. Well, come on in, ladies, and uh, take your pick. Sister of hers, Lorraine. Well, I think the time has come to have a talk with that woman, a real talk. Yeah, I think you'd have more luck talking on mule. Well, just the same, before things get any worse, I'd like to ease her mind. Yeah, how are you figuring on doing that? Well, Ross, you and I could ride out over there and have a nice, pleasant talk with her, that's all. Go away up, man. Get my horse and go with you. No, no, you've been through enough today. The only place you're going, young fella, is home. Tried alone, Gabrielle. Afternoon, ladies. Now, be of some help to you, Miss Lowell. Oh, thank you. Let me get that thing lined up for you. There. There you go. Anytime I can be of help, you just let me know, will you? Oh, isn't that a nice thing to say, Gabrielle? Indeed it was. Well, how are you today? Is, uh, is your sister Sarah around? We'd like to talk to her if we may. Well, she's gone out to the pasture, Mr. Cartwright, but I'm sure she'll be back shortly. Well. Shouldn't we ask them in? Well, yes, I suppose. Well, Won't you, you come in, gentlemen? So you see, by 
helping you young ladies out. We're just trying to pay off an old debt to your uncle. We want to help however we can. The first thing we got to do is find out who's behind all this trouble. We already know who's behind it, Mr. Cartwright. I ask you to leave this house. But, Sarah, the Cartwrights are our guests. My son and I just came over as neighbors. I'll ask you to leave in the same fashion. Immediately. Miss Lowell, you may find this hard to understand, but we just came over to try to help out. You seem determined to bury us under deeper and deeper obligations. And you seem equally determined to fight the wrong people. You know, if you expended half the energy on making friends as you do on discouraging them, I think you'd find things a whole lot easier. I'm going to tell you something, Miss Lowell. You're going down to defeat. You seem determined to do that at your own hands. And you're going to drag your sisters along with you. Well, let that be my responsibility. Please leave. Good day, ladies. Sarah, how could you? Did you hear him? He practically threatened me. He did not. You're the one who provoked him. Why'd you have to go and spoil everything? Oh, stop sniveling, Lorraine. Please, go see to Heather. Dr. Martin says she's to have constant care. Sarah, will, will you put that weapon down? It's Lucifer's tool. Gabrielle, we have no choice. We must defend our land. This is the only thing these people understand. What did you find out? Well, I'll tell you what we found out. Found out that Clerk Billings had sneaked into Catlin's office a while ago. That ties them all together. Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? They haven't been able to drive the Lowell sisters off that ranch, and now I bet you they're going to try something a little more drastic. Let's see Roy Coffey. Yeah? Taught you how to load the guns, and we've practiced taking window positions four times. And we'll do it again and again until we can do it in our sleep. Sarah, I'm exhausted. And besides, I will not, not ever shoot one of those dreadful things. It's a question of survival. Well, there must be other ways for ladies to defend their house. Sarah, I'm ready. Heather, get back to your bed. You're not well enough to fight. But, Sarah... Get back to your bed. In this savage country, even ladies must defend their homes against wild animals and Indians and their neighbors, if necessary. But there's no need to fight the Cartwrights. Lorraine, I will not have you weeping at the mere mention of their names. But, Sarah, she's right. The Cartwrights are our friends. I will not discuss it. All right, get your bows and arrows. All right, ladies. Positions. Excellent. Now, if anyone sets foot on our land, they'll pay the penalty.
Indian like a stone. Oh, it was easy. Heather, take cover. No, I want to fight you. Don't argue. I'm not arguing, but I'm not a baby anymore. And besides, who drew first blood? There's something moving out there. Don't panic. Oh, I see one. I will not tolerate any panic. For you and your stupid ideas. Get some more bullets. I'll show you how to drive them out and won't be with any kids' tricks either. What are you gonna do? Well, we should have done in the first place. All right, get rid of those stupid bows and arrows. Get your guns. We're going to settle this once and for all. You mean we're going to kill them women? We need this land, don't we? Now get your guns. Get going. sisters and I are deeply indebted to you. I can only say for myself that when one is in strange country, one must exercise extreme caution. Well, of course, Miss Lowe, we, we can understand that. Quiet generosity seems to be a habit with you. You must come over for tea one day this week. And bring your sons, too. There's so much that we'd like to ask about ranching. So much to learn. Well, you, uh, you just ask the questions, ma'am, and we'll be glad to supply the answers if we can. You know, Paul, I just don't believe it. Just don't believe it. Four little ladies from Beacon Hill holding off that whole Indian tribe like, like seasoned troopers, huh? <laughs> I think I know a few people that can believe it. Yeah, they can sure believe that over there. <laughs> well, ladies, time to start supper. Sarah. Sarah. Well, I suppose seasoned Indian fighters do deserve special consideration. Company dismissed. <laughs> Won't you come in for some supper, gentlemen? Don't oh, be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> you need any potatoes, the young house will do it. <laughs> 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 